oh hey, now that I've finished the foreman, I just got to find a good place to display them. Welcome to Breath of Life Development. My name is Josh Foreman and today we are continuing from the last project. If you saw my last video where I created the Foreman, this statue here, you'll know what I'm talking about. I built them specifically to sit behind me when I live stream on Twitch and I wanted um, him to stand on something that had some, some weight to it so he wouldn't accidentally get knocked off the shelf. So that's what I did today. So the aesthetic for this base and the character are derived from uh, Blanco's Block Party, the game that I work on, and that aesthetic is derived from art toys, which is this genre where essentially it's like elevated commercial toys. So you know the action figures you had when you were a kid and the play sets and that kind of stuff. It's like if you take those and you do some artistic twist to them. So in this case, I was really inspired by the play sets I had as a kid in the 80s and those sort of injection molded shiny plastic play sets. So I wanted to do that, but again, elevated a little bit. Before we jump into it, I want to remind you that I have a Patreon and patrons get access to the full length version of this video that's more teaching oriented. This one is just to show you the process real quick. And uh, yeah, so without any more ado, let's jump into it. So first of all, since I was trying to make this look like a part of Blanco's block party, I mocked up the, the logo, as it were, the stage in the game, choosing between these different materials. Ultimately, I was trying to make something that was a little understated so that the form of the character would really stand out in front of it. There's a lot of really cool materials in the game, but some of them are a little too wild. Uh, so I thought a dark gray with these little black dots would be a good way to go. And then once I got into the real world, I didn't want to go straight to the full scale model just because I wanted to make sure that what I was thinking in my head would work. Uh, then I just started cutting up pieces. Just use, uh, use mostly a lot of scrap that I had laying around. If I were to do this over again, I would try a different way. I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure how I would do it differently. I just know that this particular approach didn't do what I was hoping it would do. I ended up having to spend way more time and use way more material than I should have to get the effect that I wanted. And here I'm just trying to get the sort of angle for the logo to look right. I've got room here for the lights to go in. I used skewers to hold them together while they were gluing. Okay, I printed out the logo and I'm just applying it on a thin sheet. Now, I really should have taken more time to make the sheet as flat as possible. Those ripples there are gonna come back to cause me trouble later on. Okay, now I'm thinking of the dimensionality of it. I kind of have it designed in a 2D way. And then I was experimenting with my hot wire cutter. Now this LED set, I think I had it for one of my Demon Hunter sculptures and ended up pulling it out for some reason. So it's kind of been used and abused. Yeah, I'm not sure the reason that it was cut apart, but I had to get it back together. Then I had to thread the entire strip through there, uh, sort of make a little compartment on the back for all of these bits. And I was trying to figure out where I wanted the plug to come out. Uh, ended up moving it over a bit. All right, and now I want to see how much the lights can be um, softened, what sort of material I could use. So I have this white, just kind of thick paper. And then I was trying a couple different materials to coat this. Uh, first was Bondo, that ate into the foam a little bit. And now I'm trying epoxy paste, uh, the stuff I've had around for something like 12 years, if not more. Um, I'm shocked that it still works at all. I mixed in some So Strong pigment to it, and uh, in order to spread it, you can use safety solvent. Yeah, originally I didn't think I was going to skin over the entire prop. I thought that I would be able to just do um, sort of bevels on, you know, where the where two layers meet, and everything else could pretty much just be painted and smoothed out that way. Um, but once I started applying this stuff, it got lumpy and bumpy, and 
I probably could have pulled it back and started over, but I thought I'd just experiment with this and see how it worked out. Yeah, and like I said, it was just way more material than I hoped I was gonna end up using. Uh, experimenting with ways to smooth this stuff after it's set. I have a little gap in here so I can put a peg and put the uh, character's foot onto that peg so they can stay firm. Um, as this plastic paste hardens, there's a good half hour period where it's semi solid enough that you can work in little uh, sharper edges and stuff. I was really afraid as I was putting so much of this stuff on here that this would become incredibly heavy, but it's not, it's not, it's not too much. It's not too bad. All right, now I had to cut the paper away because the, you know, the gunk I put over it stuck to it. Um, but I'll just put another sheet back there later. Okay, now I'm going back in and refining the edges, trying to reestablish that stylized angles. And uh, to really get this right, I'm using epoxy sculpt because the epoxy paste, while you know it covers stuff really well, it's very hard to shape and to keep it shape. Whereas this stuff is made specifically for sculpting. So I went in most of the edges by hand like this and just hand sculpted all the edges. For some reason, I got ambitious and thought it would be interesting to have another sort of layer line going halfway through the logo. At first I didn't have that and I just thought it was, I don't know, it felt cowardly to me. I had to continue the general aesthetic through the logo to make myself content. Uh, doing as much sanding as I can with a large power sander. Obviously you can't get all the details in there, but starting with the biggest tools possible is usually the way to save yourself the most time. Uh, back to the Bondo. Um, I love their lid design that makes the little hardener just pop out and fly away. So I ended up liking the Bondo a lot more than I liked the Plasti Paste. Um, except for the horrific smell, Bondo works a lot better as a um, it, well, you can sand it a lot easier. I mixed different amounts of So Strong pigment into it, and it turned out actually causing me huge problems, which you're about to see. It might be the proportion that I used. To some degree or another, it retarded the um, setup of the Bondo. You can see here, it's just, yeah, it did not set. This was days later, and it was still sludge. So I had to go in, and scrape it all off. Here I am trying some, to get the texture that I was going for, I'm trying some um, orange peel? What is this called? It's, it's a wall texture stuff. It shoots out really runny at first. So after I got that out of the way, gave it another try. After it dries, you kind of use, uh, what is this called, a knockdown? You knock it down, something like that. This is a knockdown spatula, a knockdown brush. I don't know. Basically, you're just squishing the texture down to a nice smooth surface. So I use Saran Wrap to be able to meet these two pieces, have them fit together like a glove, but still be separable. Again, it's very nice to keep things as separate as possible, as long as possible. And story time again. We've got our other patron supporter here, Nick Evans. <clears throat> Different kind of story now. Uh, prepare yourself content warning, it's a, it's a little spooky. Nick Evans was browsing an old bookstore when he found an ancient red leather-bound tome. Curious, he pulled on it, but it only tilted, not letting him remove it from the shelf. A thump and a creak startled him. He feels cold air on the back of his neck. Turning to find the source of the breeze, he sees a bookshelf swiveling to create an opening to cold, inky blackness. Looking around for the shop owner, he notices the other customers are standing completely still eyes rolled back in their heads. Not being a fool, his first impulse is to quickly walk past the frozen customers and promptly leave the store. He feels electric jitters as he passes each deadly still patron and hears a faint hum. But his survival instinct overpowers his curiosity and he beelines to the heavy wooden front door. 
The brass bell jingles as he opens it. The sound of the doorbell suddenly pitches down into a low, resounding gong sound as the exit for the bookstore is revealed to be the entrance to an identical shop. The same stock still customers, their faces frozen in rictus grimaces, the same obscure dusty books. Nick double checks behind him. Yes, this is the same store. The sound of dozens of chattering teeth rouses Nick from his shock. All the customers' heads swivel to face him, even those on bodies turned away from him. It suddenly seems that the secret bookshelf door is the least threatening of his options. He slowly walks past the rigid people clacking their teeth, wide eyes glaring, heads slowly pivoting. That's it for now. I suggest subscribing to this channel and especially hitting the bell button so that you'll be reminded next time a video comes out you can find out what happened to poor Nick Evans in the old bookstore. <laughs>
yeah, the problem is getting into these kind of areas, right? It, like, it, when that thing is on there, you can't get around little um, concave areas like that. Uh, so I tried filling in the bits with uh, Bondo to see if I could get a nice sort of smooth fillet, maybe? That's what I was trying to get? I don't know. Eventually, I just went back to using a regular Dremel bit to get the uh, holes and then I figured I'll figure some other way to fill them. Such as this, I'm using UV resin. I thought because it's sort of a thick syrupy liquid, if I press it up against the edges, the capillary action will give it a nice, I keep saying bevel, I, that's not the right word, what, whatever the inverse of a bevel is. And I wasn't totally happy with it, so I decided to just go back to my standard tried and true method and material and use epoxy sculpt again uh, to determine where I wanted the scatter terrain to go, the little pebbles. Um, I had to make sure the figure was there so it wasn't going to get in the way of him and just compositionally it would work well. And while I was here, I figured I might as well put my little logo in the back using the same sort of technique that I'm using on the spots. Yeah, so here I am finally getting the sort of technique that I'm really happy with for these. They almost look like bits of coal or onyx that's protruding just a tiny bit from the surface. Okay, for the bottom, because I want to be able to move this around without scratching surfaces, just use this old dish rag. Uh, this is where I had to attach the uh, AC power outlet. And then I decided to just throw the whole thing away. I was done with it. Let's just throw it away. No, I'm just kidding. This is uh, this trash can just seemed to be about the right size to hold the <laughs> the prop while I um, put the bottom on there. I thought if I put the rest of the towel and some, you know, safety stuff around there, it would be pretty safe and wouldn't get scratched up. But of course, I was wrong. Um, and then, yeah, painted with some very cheap black glossy enamel to get this look. And then I removed the masking frisket stuff that I had on the letters, cleaned up the edges, and by some just bizarre happenstance, you know, I did not count these things when I drew them on, I didn't count them when I sculpted them, but since I was painting them and I was streaming, I was like, you know what? Might as well just count them as I paint them. $4.99. And uh, turned out, are you serious? Is this literally going to be 500? That there were literally 500. What the what? 500, what, how, what? Oh my God. Okay, and finally we just plug it in and it works. Look at that. All right, well, that was fun. More music from my son, Shane, to play us out. Thank you so much to the patrons, and uh, it's been a delight. 
please remember that I Twitch stream every week, twice a week usually, um, always on Sunday, always on Wednesday evenings, and then uh, also I'm on the uh, Reaper Miniatures live stream as well on Thursdays at noon Pacific time. So check that out if you're, I just can't get enough of me, I guess. Anyway, that'll do it for today. See you next time. Bye.